Second Emir of Canaan, Muhammad Hassan II, will not leave without a fight as his lawyers are threatening lawsuits or if the embattled man is not released, if given a 24 hours ultimatum. And the revelation that over 3 billion naira stolen from the coffers of the NDDC have been recovered from former officials of the commission and contractors. Hello everyone and welcome. One of the most beautiful day in the year, 10th of March 2020. Welcome to the program. So much to talk about on politics tonight. I'm Sean Akimbalo from Abuja studio in the nation's capital. The Ninja Delta Development Commission has been enmeshed in controversies over its running and the ongoing forensic audit is not yet finalized, but it appears some stolen monies have already been wrecked in. So today, President Muhammad Buhari said over 3 billion naira have been recovered from officials and contractors who had worked with the commission. Today, the president set up an advisory committee on the NDTC, and at that occasion is when he made that revelation. The presidential monitoring committee will report to me and will be chaired by the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs. Its members are drawn from various MDAs and will focus on monitoring operations and activities of the Commission. In the same vein, the inauguration of the Niger Delta Development Advisory Committee today is in line with the provision of Section 11.1 of the NDDC Establishment Act. This committee is charged with the responsibility of advising the board and monitoring its activities. Our decision to inaugurate this committee ahead of the constitution of the board is to enable us to develop insights into the affairs of the Commission, which will properly guide the board when constituted once the forensic audit exercise on the Commission is concluded. Well, that's on one hand. Don't forget, our major focus tonight is still going to be on Kano. Some development coming in on that situation. 24-hour ultimatum has been given by the lawyers uh, to the dethroned mayor that he should be released from the exile in Nassau State. Mr. Femi Fallon has spoken to us on the program also. We will hear his views whether or not it is right to dethrone the emir and the options left to the emir and the former uh, uh, governor of the CBN. Let's check out some political stories on our political round. Protests rocked the headquarters of Niger's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party in Abuja, as dozens of its youth call for the expulsion of Timia Laibe, who was one of the Bielsa State governorship aspirants in the November last year elections. Timia Laibe is in court to challenge the emergence of Senator Doye Dewey as the party's candidate, an action the protesters say is anti-party. They asked the leadership of the PDP to expel him. According to the protesters, the expulsion of the former NDDC boss will serve as a deterrent for others who may want to undermine the internal redress mechanism of the party. The president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, on Tuesday announced the constitution of a joint committee to engage the executive arm of government on measures to be taken to insulate the Nigerian economy against the impact of the sudden crash of crude oil prices globally. The announcement came after a point of order raised by the Senate leader, Yahya Abdullahi, during plenary over the rising concerns on the spread of the dreaded coronavirus, that's COVID-19 disease, which has led to the crash of several markets across the world. And the House of Representatives has resolved to invite officials of the Academic Staff Union of Universities and the Ministry of Labor and Education for a meeting with the leadership of the House over the warning strike embarked upon by ASU. 
This is part of a resolution reached at deliberations of urgent public importance raised by Representative Dachung Bagas on the urgent need for the House to intervene in the rift between the federal government and ASU over the IPES and other underlying issues. The Senate on Tuesday received an executive bill from President Mahmoud Buhari to amend the Finance Act 2019. The act, which was passed by the Senate on November the 21st, 2019, received presidential assent on January the 13th, 2020. The executive bill, accompanied by a formal letter dated March 6, 2020, was read during plenary by the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan. The President, in his letter, explained that the request for amendment is aimed at clarifying the administrative date for the increase in value-added tax from 5% to 7.5%, effective from February 1, 2020. Let's get down to business, everyone. Tonight, more developments to the throwment of and banishment of uh, the former Emir of Khan, Mohammed Sanusi II. The embattled former Emir, Elijah Mohammed Sanusi, may have taken his dethronement in good faith. He appears first to launch a legal battle to secure his freedom. His lawyer and former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Abubakar Mahmoud, says the former Emir is ready to challenge his banishment and detention in court. He explained that. The former central bank governor was moved to Nasarawa State against his wish as he had chosen to spend his exile in Lagos. Mr. Mahmoud insisted that his client's decision to go to court is based on the fact that his right to freedom is protected by the nation's constitution. Alaji Sanusi was deposed and banished to Nasarawa State yesterday by the Kano State government, citing his refusal to abide by the instructions of the government. The former mayor of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi II, has spoken after he was dethroned by the Kano state government. In a video that went viral, Sanusi said he was accepted, he has accepted his dethronement in good faith and described it as the will of God. Let's get to the conversation tonight, everyone. Uh, again, we're expecting uh, the aide to the governor to join us, but we have from our Kano studio, uh, professor of history at the Bayero State University, uh, Bayero University in Kano, Professor Tijani Nania. Thank you so much for joining in today. This development, how does it come? Uh, in, if you look back at history, give a sense of what has happened and what we are seeing today, what do you make of it, Prof? Well, you see, the issue of um, disarmament of emirs in Kano, we have been acquainted with, the, with that uh, tradition since the 12th century. One was removed then. In the 15th century, one was removed. In the, at the beginning of the jihad, those that were defeated, the emir was removed and even killed. When the colonialists took over in 1903, the then emir was removed and banished to Lokwaja. That was the tradition when banishment started by colonial, uh, during colonial period. And in 1963, when the grandfather of the present dethroned emir, that was uh, Muhammad Sunusi I, resigned or was removed, then he was banished to uh, Azari in the present Bochi state. And now it comes to the present Emir, Muhammad Sunni II, who is removed and is now banished to Nasarawa state. So that is the history of disarmament and the banish but for banishment is started with colonial period. Um, in the case of um, what we've seen, uh, the banishment, but under this dispensation, uh, can you take someone from Kano State and banish him to Nasara State? Uh, is any of the territories in Nasara under the Kano Emirate? Yeah, I think this is the question that one should ask, and it is the bone of contention. I think guided by the present political democratic dispensation, it is not proper to remove somebody from a position and then banish him 
to a place of his own dislike. Uh, the Constitution of Nigeria gives freedom, gives freedom of the desire of anybody to locate or relocate to any area of his own interest or desire. But then to remove somebody and banish him is something that started with post-colonial period. It was started during the 1960s, for example. Uh, and, that, and that followed what happened in, 1980, in 1993 when Sultan of Sokoto Desuki was removed and he was banished to Tarawa State. And uh, sometime when uh, later the Emir of Gondu, Major Jokolo, was removed, he was also banished to Latvia. And these created problems, especially that of Jokolo, and it was even contested in court. I'm not a lawyer, but I learned that that decision was quashed, and, uh, and henceforth the Federal Court of, uh, court, Federal court of Appeal gave an injunction that it is illegal to remove somebody from a position of a traditional authority and banish him. Removing is one's response, one of the government's responsibility, but banishing is an illegal act that has been committed. Give us a sense of, um, for a lot of people who know uh, former Emir Sanusi as a former CBN governor, a banker, uh, a former a retired banker and all of that. Uh, let's look at the institution because it's also a governance structure in Nigeria, the institution of the Kano Emirate. In the northern region of the country and in the traditional institution of Nigeria, how would you describe the Emirate, this tool of Kano Emirate? How big uh, in the hierarchy, wh where does it stand? I think the stool of the Emir of Kano, the institution of the Emirate, has been there for over 1,000 years. That was when it was a kingdom. When Kano was a kingdom, and it was the leading, or I can say one of the leading kingdoms in central Sudan. And from 15th century, Kano assumed position of influence and uh, uh, dominance in the area based on its economic uh, commercial prowess and because it became an interfort, a rendezvous of visitors from far and beyond, from within regional uh, areas of Nigerian territories and North Africa. And that gave the position of Kano to be to, uh, a, an important uh, place in the history of Central Sudan and West Africa generally. And since then, the institution grew and commanded a lot of respect from other kingdoms, both within and beyond, and even from North Africa. And that even established the tradition of some North African states in Libya, even sending ambassadors to Kano. And this increased, and even when colonial, even after the jihad, Kano became second only to Sokoto in terms of importance. In fact, it became the, the nerve center of the, of the economy of Sokoto Caliphate. And that's why the position of the Emir of Kano was of much respect to the leadership of the Sultan in Sokoto. Even when colonialism set in after 1903, Kano retained its position of influence both in terms of politics and the economy. That's why many of the uh, colonial economic inter in infrastructure in northern Nigeria were first established in Kano. And the Emir of Kano received such respect and accommodation by the colonial authorities. This continued through even to the decolonization period that gave Kano prominence, even in the politics. Even the scheming that brought about the leader of uh, NPC, uh, Northern People's Congress, that is Ahmed Bella Saldona, was hatched in Kano. And, and 
its front runner was the grand was the great was the grandfather of the present dethroned Emir Muhammad Sunusi II. This and in fact Emir Sunusi continued to exercise such influence even in regional government until after 1959 when intrigues within the political structure now did away with him. And even after that, he continued uh, to act. Uh, Professor, fact, let, let, let's take a breather for a moment. We will get some legal views on this when we come back. Mr. Femi Falano, uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, has spoken on these two channels, television. We will hear him. And also, we have other legal views on it, which are going to give us some other perspective that you need to know on this. Also, we will hear from the government of Kano State on the latest development. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, everyone.